Welcome to the fourth and final section of Microsoft Power BI Recipes, Power BI Desktop. And we'll be looking at tips, tricks, and a capstone project. So let's briefly look at what we'll be covering this section. First of all, we'll be looking at telling the story of your data, which is what we'll be getting into in this video, so I'll hold off on explaining that further. Next, we'll be looking at thinking outside of the visual box. And here, I'll show you how to utilize the built-in scatter plot to create a unique visual that will really captivate your audience. Then, we'll look at theming it up, which is where I'll show you how to utilize the relatively new concept of themes in Power BI Desktop. Lastly, we have Capstone Project. And this is where you will have the opportunity to put together a full-blown Power BI Desktop project utilizing everything you've learned from start to finish. And I really encourage you to take your project and submit it to the Microsoft Data Stories Gallery. So let's press on with this video. So once again, in this video, I'm going to show you how to tell the story of your data. So what exactly do I mean by telling the story of your data? Well, sometimes you need to present your findings from data to people like executives or stakeholders or coworkers. And you need to do that in order to prompt some kind of action, a call to action. This is different from merely creating a report that may be updated on a daily or weekly basis. This is storytelling with data. This is meant to be utilized primarily in the context of a presentation. So in this video, you're going to learn the tips and tricks to engage your audience, emphasize your point, and exhort to action. And just to the right, as you can see, this should give you a little idea of what I mean by communicating or sharing the story of your data. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so here we are back in Power BI Desktop. And here I have a sample sales and profits report. And this could be a, a report that is utilized in a company and perhaps refreshed on a daily or weekly basis. And probably what stands out most immediately to you is this down here. Here we have a somewhat of a flat or level correlation between sales and profits for the furniture category. So this marks the beginning of our story, so to speak. Now, I wouldn't actually show this entire report in the context of a presentation simply because there's way too many other visuals that would serve as a distraction to my main point, which is this problem area, this issue here. But I show it to you because this is where you would start in your investigation. So assume that you've already taken the time to dig into this data, to drill into this problem area here, and you've now put together a presentation that consists of uh, several visualizations that help communicate the story of your data that communicate this issue that we see here, and then it'll conclude with a call to action. So here we have a meeting summary for a business operations meeting. And what this page does is it provides a purpose statement for your presentation, along with a summary of the main points that you'll be covering via your data visualizations. So the importance of having a page like this is to provide the necessary context for the, da for the data visualizations that you'll be presenting. So with that being said, let's move right into our first data visualization. Okay, so here we have our first data visualization in our storytelling scenario. And as you can see, this is the exact same scatter plot from that report. However, what I've done is I've dedicated this visual to this entire page. And right above it, I have a label, a title with the, the main point, which says there's a flat correlation between sales and profits in the furniture category. And then I have a subtitle, which gives 
further context to this visual, and that is profit to sales correlation by product category. Now, as you can notice, the data visualization best practices that we already looked at are at play here. I utilize these principles to help communicate this aspect of the story. Everything is left aligned here. There's a, a title, a label. I even have a text box here that provides further details of this visualization. And as you can tell, there's a consistent color here between the text box and the data visualization itself. The important thing to notice with the color is that the, the data points that I'm not interested in but serve as kind of background context, I used a shade of gray for, whereas I colored the data of importance orange. And then going back to this text box here, you'll notice that I provided a brief summary of hard facts, some details of the background data to communicate to the audience. And the importance of doing this is that as useful and helpful as this visualization is in communicating to us that there's a, a serious problem here with the furniture category, when you're dealing with executives or stakeholders, they're really going to want to know the numbers. So in this text box, I know Furniture has a noticeably weaker profit to sales correlation in all regions. West region has greatest sales, 2.3 million, but only a profit margin percent of 2.6 or $61,800. So this gives further details, further context to the issue at hand and will help us when we get to the conclusion of this presentation where we have an exhortation to action or a call to action because that call to action needs to be rooted in hard facts. So here we have our first visualization which sets up the issue, the problem at hand and that is there is a bad correlation between sales and profits in the furniture category. So with that being said, let's go on to our next visual. Okay, here once again we have the title at the top, Dilemma, and that is tables and chairs are typically sold together, yet they exist at the opposite end of the profit spectrum. And again, I have a subtitle for further context, and that is profit by subcategory in the furniture category. So here, once again, I'm using color to emphasize the main data points, and that is the tables category here and the chairs and chair mats category here. The light gray, uh, this is important for providing context, but it's background data. It's background information. It's not what our primary focus is on, and therefore, we don't want it to be a distraction. Therefore, I use a light gray. And again, I'm using text boxes here and here to provide further details, further context in this storytelling scenario. So once again, what we're doing here is we're drilling down into the data with each new page, with each step. And in each new page, we're communicating more and more of this story that is clarifying the issue at hand. So let's go on to the next visual. Okay, here, once again, we've drilled down even further. And this says that the West region market is the greatest contributor to the profit loss. And so what I did here is I created a new category called greatest loss by utilizing the clustering capability in Power BI. And what I've shown here is that all of these data points represent or they fall in the greatest loss category. However, as you can see here, the West region has the greatest loss. And I've emphasized that not only by ordering the data from greatest to least, 
but I've also used the orange color to emphasize that this is a an area of focus and of course I utilize this arrow here and you can access this arrow again via shapes once again I used a text box to provide further details of this visual and then a quick next section here in order to start getting the audience thinking about what the next visual is going to present so I'm already providing that context for them and that says let's look at shipping costs for tables and chairs focusing especially in the West region market so basically what we're doing is we're drilling down into the data even more communicating the story of the data one step further so let's go ahead and take a look at that tab okay here we have our final visual in this storytelling example once again the title or label which says tables has the greatest average shipping cost and I've really emphasized that again with the color and I utilize these lines here once again you can access that via the shapes and then I used text boxes as well to serve as category labels and I provided the price once again you'll notice that I do have bookcases here however I do have that in a light gray because that is background information as you'll recall the bookcases in a previous visual they too had a negative profit however the tables had a much more negative profit and therefore tables is what our primary focus is on not bookcases perhaps at a later time we could look at bookcases but I provide it here in a light gray to serve as context it's in the background it's not of the main priority and then of course I have here chairs and chair mats in blue to emphasize that category because once again as you'll recall I'm speaking of tables in comparison to chairs and chair mats because those products are typically sold together and so having taken the time now to drill into the data utilize uh, simple yet clear visuals to help communicate the story of the data and of course using things like color and text boxes using labels and position all of which helps emphasize the story of the data it pinpoints the main data points thus engaging the audience and emphasizing what really matters to them now I'm ready to exhort them to action which brings us to our last page here so here we have our summary or conclusion page and this is where you would summarize the main points from your presentation and then conclude with a plan of action or a call to action based on the evidence that you presented via your data visualizations so I do hope that you found this video useful and hopefully it has given you a lot of ideas that you can utilize in your own business context. Okay, so let's quickly summarize the main points in this video. The first thing we saw is that we want to engage our audience. And we do this by using a presentation purpose and summary to provide context. And that's context to the presentation, that's context to the visualizations that we'll be utilizing in our presentation. And then we also want to use simple and clear visuals to make it easy for our audience to understand. Lastly, we conclude with an exhortation to action. And this is to conclude your presentation with a summary of the main points with a call to action but that call to action must be based on the evidence that you presented in your data visualization. In our next video, we'll be thinking outside of the box by taking a look at how you can utilize the built in scatter plot to create a unique and dynamic visual that will really captivate your audience.